What's up and welcome back to a Sly Cooper discussion video. Now before I get into anything, in my previous video, I discussed about whether or not Kevin Monroe wrote a draft for the movie. And about that, someone in the comment section wrote me a nice comment, and here it is. Hey dude, looking forward to this video, aw thanks. I do know for a fact that Kevin Monroe at least has a draft written for the Sly movie, because late last year, I asked him about it. He said the story I wrote was really fun character based comedy, action heist adventure. Has a totally different feel than Ratchet and Clank, which I love. He also said that when the film moves forward, he's confident the world will know ASAP. What he told me was that the film just needed financers and once they have that, he's ready to go. According to the user, they had this conversation on Instagram DM, and like the user mentioned, take this with a grain of salt, but I still believe this gives us hope for the movie. And here's even more hope, two days ago if I'm not mistaken, a user sent a message to Rainmaker on Facebook Messenger, and here it is. So the user sent this message, Sly Cooper question mark. Hi Dizzy, Sly Cooper is next on our development slate. Stay tuned for more details. Now a lot of you might ask, dude, do you actually believe these things? Well look, Kevin Monroe and Rainmaker are pretty active with their fans. Well, probably not Rainmaker, but Kevin Monroe is actually pretty active. Like if you send him a message on Twitter, he might reply. And here's an extra. Recently an article popped up online discussing about the Ratchet and Clank movie and Rainmaker. And once you read the article, you realize that Rainmaker might actually be working on the Sly Cooper movie. And why do I say that exactly? This is what was mentioned. In the article. But Rainmaker, while still providing service work, is committed to go to the feature film route again with its next project, Sly Cooper, also based on a PlayStation video game franchise. Okay look, not all articles online are trustworthy, but after reading that online, there's still hope for the movie, I don't know. Oh and thanks to the person who sent me this article. Here's something else I want to point out about the article. Apparently, Rainmaker largely financed the Ratchet and Clank movie. Yes, Sony might do some funding as well, like ads and stuff like that. However, Rainmaker is really the one who produced the movie, they really financed the whole thing. And after reading comments on the Sly Cooper movie teaser, people believe that the movie might get cancelled. Cause you know, the Ratchet and Clank movie got terrible reviews from critics, and because of that, people fear that Sony might pull a big no, like they might refuse. Look, I know that these companies are working with a Sony IP, however, like I said, Sony doesn't do the whole financing thing, these companies do. Look, this is how I see the whole situation. Sony simply gives them the right to work with the IP, and if I go back to the first user I mentioned in this video, Kevin Monroe explained that Blockade and Rainmaker were looking for financers for the Sly Cooper movie. Ask yourselves this, why would they look for financers if they have Sony? I mean Sony's a pretty huge corporation. And something tells me Sony simply gives them the right to work with the IP, that's it. And I'm guessing they're looking for a helping hand other than Sony. Even though the Ratchet and Clank movie was a flop according to critics, Sony can still make a tiny bit of money, even if it was a lot less than expected. So this is how I see it, Sony gives them the rights, and the companies simply produce the movie. So I don't think that the Sly Cooper movie will get cancelled just because of Sony. And after getting these replies by Rainmaker and Kevin Monroe, I believe there's still a chance for the movie. Some of you might disagree, it's fine. Okay, some of you might be like, but dude, you have to be a bit realistic, you know? But if they take the reviews into account, they can improve from that. And if advertisement is done right this time, then the movie might do a lot better than Ratchet and Clank. And that's what we all hope will happen. And with that being said, let's go over what the movie might actually look like. What can we expect? What will the story be like? How will the villains be implemented? Characters, voice actors, how will everything fit into the movie? What could the companies do to make the movie a lot better than Ratchet and Clank? Okay, assuming that the movie's in production, will the movie be a complete reimagining of the first game, or will it fully be based off the first game? Look, if we go over Ratchet and Clank, the movie was a reimagining, and people felt like the relationship between Ratchet and Clank was left out, and the movie focused too much on Quark. Now, what should be different about the Sly Cooper movie? It's simple, you just have to focus on the main characters and the main elements of the game. If it's really a reimagining we're talking about, it's cool to have new characters and other characters from other games. But just don't set aside the Cooper gang, like don't put Murray and Bentley aside and make Sly the center of intention. The Sly series is all about the trio, Sly, Bentley and Murray. So it would be cool for the movie to focus on the trio and not only Sly. I really loved the Ratchet and Clank movie, however, there's simply some stuff I cannot disagree on, and it has to do with Ratchet and Clank's relationship throughout the movie. Clank was basically separated in the beginning, and the story focused a lot more on Ratchet becoming a Galactic Ranger. 
Fans who played the original were expecting the movie to be a bit more focused on the duo. And that's what they loved about the original game. Now for Sly Cooper's case, I hope that the movie focuses on the trio. Like, don't simply toss Murray and Bentley aside and focus on Sly. I know it might be a reimagining, but still. Okay, yeah, the movie might be for family and kids and fans, but if you want all fans to enjoy the movie, just stick to the basics, just focus on the trio. And once Sly faces the villain, that's when the movie should focus on Sly. Sly grew up with Bentley and Murray. Like, thanks to them, he was able to follow his family's legacy. And by just focusing on Sly, the story will just not feel the same. Like I mentioned before, New characters and characters from other games will be pretty cool, but focus on the trio, that's it. And if they do so, then the movie might simply be better than Ratchet & Clank, I guess. And again, I'm not hating on the Ratchet & Clank movie, I absolutely love the movie. Focusing on the main characters might just make the movie a lot more appealing to all fans, that's what I'm trying to say. With that being said, let's move on to something else. Now what's going to happen to the Fiendish 5 in the movie? How exactly are they going to fit the villains in the movie without making the story feel way too rushed? Now that's the tricky part with the Sly Cooper movie. Like I mentioned many times, they just have to find the right balance. Balance as in, to find the right screen time for each villain. Like Clockwork is the main boss, so the story of the movie should focus a lot more on Clockwork in the end. So Clockwork will basically have a lot of screen time. I would love that, Clockwork's one amazing villain. He's the best villain in the series. I could imagine them giving small segments to every single villain. I could picture something like this. The gang's going through a set of plans and trying to figure out how to stop the villain. And while they're trying to come up with plans, there's some awesome music playing in the background, like sound effects and all. And then later on, they show us the scene where they face the villain. We're talking about a 90 minute movie here. They can't show every single little detail in the movie. If they cram in too much, the story will feel way too rushed, and people will start complaining. And that's not what we want. So like I said, try to give segments to each and every villain, and in the end, give the biggest screen time to Clockwork. Plus, if they give small segments to every villain, apart from Clockwork, that gives the writer time to focus on the characters such as Sly, Murray and Bentley, and even Carmelita. Sly and Carmelita are super hilarious when they're together. Like, I want to see that during the movie. I don't want them to skip that. I want to mention something about Clockwork. I hope the movie does justice. And what I mean by justice, Clockwork is the main villain in the first game. I don't want him to toss him aside and then be like, okay hey guys, since this movie's a reimagining, El Jefe's the villain. There you go. Yeah, you know, this movie's supposed to appeal to young audiences, families and kids and fans. And since it's gonna bring in new people, we decided to make Clockwork not the main villain. No, Clockwork is the villain of the movie. I don't want him to end up like Drek in the Ratchet and Clank movie. Now, I'm not gonna spoil the Ratchet and Clank movie since a lot of you still haven't seen the movie. But probably some of you know what I mean. So please, focus on Clockwork. Clockwork is one monster, I mean he haunted the Cooper family for generations. Like, he has to be the main villain. And I'm sure a lot of you want this as well. So I guess we can all agree on this. Okay, now someone in the comments section mentioned an idea about a sequel. Cause you know, Finish 5, that's a lot of villains, how will they fit him all in the movie? Well, here's the tricky part. If they do decide to make a sequel, the ending of the first movie must be eye-catching. Like, people would want to see the sequel. However, if the first movie flops, not only we won't get a sequel, but fans will also be upset since the story will never be finished. And that's why if they give small segments to every villain, I'm sure they can come up with something to make fans and casual viewers happy. Now for the voice actors, Bentley and Murray have had the same voice actors throughout the whole series. However, for Carmelita, we've had a we've had a few changes, but I gotta say my favorite one is from Sly 4. Grey Delight did a pretty good job and she's my favorite. Now what about Sly? In the teaser, Kevin Miller wasn't the one who voiced Sly, it was Ian James Corlett. And fans are wondering what's going on. Will Kevin Miller actually voice Sly? We want Kevin Miller, we want Kevin Miller. I admit, having Kevin Miller would be pretty sweet. I mean, he's Sly, right? And plus, for two years, Ian James Corlett has heard nothing about the movie, news-wise. And within two years, I'm pretty sure they could hire Kevin Miller. If so, then great. For Bentley and Murray, it's probably going to be the same voice actors. We have we have Matt Olsen for Bentley and, and Chris Murphy for Murray. Now how about Clockwork? Now Clockwork had a pretty epic voice in Sly 1, and he was voiced by Russ Douglas. Now I'm not too sure if Russ Douglas will reprise his role, but it would be pretty sweet though. As long as the main characters have the same voice actors, I'm good. I'll be happy. And a lot of you will be as well. 
Alright, how do you think the movie will start? How do you think the story will begin? One thing I'd love to see in the Sly Cooper movie is the night of the attack. I mean, that's where everything began. That's how Sly entered the orphanage, met Murray and Bentley. And about that, are they going to include a scene in which we see the orphanage? If you've read the comics, there's actually a scene where Sly, Murray and Bentley are in the orphanage. And it's a pretty cute moment. And I'd like to see that in the movie. It might be like a brief moment or a flashback or something like that, but yeah. It's a 90 minute movie, so maybe you can squeeze that in somehow, like flashback. Like a bit of backstory would be pretty cool. And the backstory brings me back to Clockwork. Will there be a scene in the movie in which we see Clockwork turning into a robot? If so, they could show that briefly in the beginning or somewhere. And what would actually be pretty cool to see is the person who was involved during the process of turning Clockwork immortal. Maybe show the person in the shadows or something, like make it mysterious. I may be wrong though, maybe Clockwork became who he is on his own. So I guess we'll find out about it in the movie. Or what if we get a scene where Clockwork starts hating the Coopers, and we see him in his organic form. Look, the Ratchet and Clank movie had Nefarious in his organic form. So all of this hate towards the Coopers began from somewhere. And if they explain it a bit in the movie, it would be pretty cool. But it should be very brief. And if they do decide to share his past as an organic life form, I think they would do that simply not to spoil anything. They would probably want to keep the story very mysterious. Like once people leave the theater, people will be like, how did this owl actually turn into a robot? But I don't know, I personally would love a backstory regarding that. But like I said, we're talking about the first game, so it could be very unlikely, even if we're talking about a reimagining. I mean look, in the Ratchet and Clank movie, Ratchet's past was never explained, so yeah, there you have it. Here's another question I keep asking myself. Will Sly's parents be shown? Their faces were never shown in the original game. I don't know if the companies wanted to keep them very mysterious, but I don't know, it feels too weird. Why hide their faces? Like, is there a theory around this? But if they keep their faces hidden again, then something tells me there's something going on. There's something very mysterious going on. Why hide their faces? Just show him. Yeah, but they showed Sly's dad during the Diamond Heist in Sly 4. But still, what about the mother? Some of you guys probably don't know about this, but Kaden, Ratchet's father, was originally supposed to be in the Ratchet and Clank movie. Now, since the movie was going to be too long, Kaden got scrapped. So something tells me that Kevin Monroe has an interest in the parents and backgrounds. So something tells me that Kevin Monroe is actually interested in sharing stories regarding the parents. Maybe show like a brief cutscene of Sly's parents raising the kid. It could be as simple as that. What other background stories I'd like to see in the movie? What about when Mick Sweeney hides the map to the Cooper Vault? If you read the comics, when Sly was young, his father gave the Cooper Vault map to Mick Sweeney at a museum. The writer might probably show something like that. And since we're talking about the first game, that scene shouldn't be that important, so they could keep it very, very brief. Wait a second, if they do decide to come up with a sequel, assuming the movie does well, maybe the Cooper Vault could be part of the sequel, I don't know. They could show that scene where Mick Sweeney has the map, and yeah, and that scene could lead towards a sequel. But hmm, I doubt it. I mean, we have Nayla in Sly 2 turning into Clawclaw. We also have Arpeggio. Now, I kind of wonder, will Arpeggio and Nayla be included in the movie? I don't see how they could fit in if we're talking about the first game, I mean. Because you know, Arpeggio and Nayla gathered all the clockwork pieces and assembled all of them. So Nayla and Arpeggio should be left for another movie, I guess. Or wait, since we're talking about a reimagining, could we see Carmelita working with Nayla in the movie? Who knows? Nayla is from Sly 2. Maybe they could show Carmelita. Carmelita and Nila working together in the movie. I know, I know. Nila betrayed the gang in Sly 2, but since we're talking about a reimagining, then why not? They could pull off something like that. And who knows, Nila might betray them differently in the movie. But like I said, Nila should be kept for another movie, I guess. One character I'd like to see in the movie is Dimitri. Dimitri's pretty funny and his theme is very nostalgic. Like, if I hear his music in the movie, I'll probably fangirl in the theater and people will think I'm crazy. You okay, bruh? Yeah, yeah, I'm just fangirling since I'm watching the Sly Cooper movie, that's it. If the movie has the old soundtracks, that would be one huge bonus. But the Ratchet and Clank movie had uh, pretty much brand new music, so ugh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think we'll get like remastered versions of older soundtracks? Now, will the Sly Cooper movie get the same treatment as Ratchet and Clank? And what do I mean by treatment? Will the Sly Cooper movie get its own game? Now that would be super interesting, and I would personally love to have a reimagined game of Stevius Raccoonus, and especially if it's based off the movie. 
Question is though, will the game have cell shaded classic graphics or CGI graphics? A CGI version of a Sly Cooper video game would be pretty sweet. It would be something new, right? I actually came up with the video a long time ago, discussing about a reimagining of Sly Cooper. Now that video's pretty old and probably cringy, but maybe you'd like to check it out. Okay, now here's one thing I want to go over. If there is going to be a game based off the movie, please release the movie way before the game. Like, I don't know if you've read some reviews by fans for the Ratchet and Clank game, but some felt like the movie was like copy and paste of video game cutscenes. Cause you know they played the game first and then watched the movie. We don't want that for the Sly Cooper movie. We don't want people starting to complain. Despite all of that, a reimagining, regardless of when it gets released, it would still be a pretty sweet deal. Like, we'd still be getting a Sly Cooper game. But still, a game based off the movie? It seems very unlikely right now. I mean, Sanzuru game is not even working on Sly anymore. Nor Sucker Punch. So if a reimagined game does happen, who will be the developer? And maybe you guys would like to discuss about that in the comments section. Alright, before I finish the video guys, during recording, someone sent me a message on Instagram regarding the production of the film. Film. The person wondered if the movie was getting produced, and he specifically asked about Dimitri, and this was their response. Hi Millie, we don't have any info yet on the script for Sly Cooper, stay tuned for more info. Okay, what's going on right now? If Kevin Monroe has a draft written, does that mean that Rainmaker has no idea about it? It seems that way though. If so, then maybe they'll eventually get their hands on the script. And soon enough, hopefully. So that's pretty cool, it seems like Rainmaker is actually active with their fans these days. And by reading all these replies, something tells me that the movie will be in production. Let's assume the film is in production. If they haven't read the script yet, something tells me that they're working on a brand new trailer and brand new characters. Like I mentioned in my previous video, we haven't seen Carmelita nor Clockwork in the trailer. So maybe they're working on that. And I would love to see the next trailer and see how things turned out. So yeah guys, I'm gonna end the video right here. If you've watched the whole video, thank you, you are awesome. So what do you think guys? How will they fit in every single member of the Fiendish 5? Do you think we'll get any backstory involving Sly's parents, Clockwork's past, or anything really? So yeah, if you have any thoughts and concerns, leave them in the comments. I've been Vivi and thanks for watching guys, I'll catch all of you next time.